Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to talk about how to take a dermatology history. I hope you find this information useful. Introduction to the consultation. As you walk into the room, don't forget to wash your hands. Introduce yourself with full name and date of birth. Also ask the patient for their full name and date of birth. Explain to them that you are yet to take history. Also ask and gain consent. Presenting complaints. You can start by asking the patient, how can I help you today? This is an open question and this allows the patient to tell you more about their presenting complaint. Afterwards, you can follow up with Socrates. Don't worry, I'm going to go through each one of those points together with you. The most obvious question will be to ask them the site. So, where is the rash? O for onset. How long has the rash or the lesion been present? C for character. How does the rash feel like? R for radiation. Is it spreading? A for associated symptoms, such as any bleeding? Is it itchy? Where is it itchy? Any redness? Swelling? Is your symptoms worse during the night? During the day? Any night sweats? Any fever? Or weight loss? T for time. Any change of the rash or the lesion over time? Such as any changes to the size, the shape, the border, the color, the texture? Is it hot? Cold? E. E for exacerbating or relieving factors. Does anything make it worse or better? S for severity. Now, this is only relevant if there is pain. If the patient mentioned that they are in pain, ask them to scale it from 1 to 10. 10 being the worst. Where would they place the pain? Well done, we've done the main part of the history taking. Now let's move to the past medical history. I normally just ask, have you had this kind of rash before? And if so, what have you tried? Did the treatment work or not? Then you can ask them some particular questions such as any, any past medical history of diabetes. Now moving on to family history. Is there any family history of other skin conditions such as eczema, skin cancer, psoriasis? These are the main ones I tend to ask. Drug history. Are they taking any prescribed drugs which might be causing the itchiness or the rash? Or are they using any recreational drugs? Smoking and alcohol. Do keep in mind that alcohol is associated with psoriasis. And smoking can increase the chance of malignancies, even skin cancer, just to be aware of this. Allergies. You can just simply ask if the patient have any allergies you should know about. Idea, concern and expectations. Ice. A lot of students are quite worried about asking this question, but you have to get used to ask it, such as. What do you think might be the cause of your symptoms? Is there anything that particularly concerns you? What are you hoping I can do to help you today? Investigations. Now, when it comes to skin, normally you don't need any investigation. But I'm just going to mention a couple of um, investigations that you might find appropriate according to the um, station that you may find during the exam. Common investigation in dermatology are skin scraping. These are quite useful for fungal infection. Nail clipping. This is also very good for uh, fungal infections. Skin biopsy. This is normally done by a specialist in case they are looking for malignancy. Skin patch. Well, this is generally used for contact dermatitis or contact allergic dermatitis if there's any suspicion of an allergic reason for the dermatitis. 
you may be asked to examine the actual skin of the patient or a photo that is presenting to you. Don't be alarmed. In this case, you can use an approach that is quite useful for all sorts of skins and lesions. I normally use the ABCD approach. A stands for asymmetry. So basically, you're checking the distribution of how this rash or lesion is um, on the skin. Normally, the idea is if it's symmetrical, that means if you put like a finger or a coin in between the lesion or the rash, it, the both halves of that rash are the same, while as asymmetrical is the opposite. B for border. Well, how does the side or the edges of the rash look like? Are they regular, irregular, well-defined or not? C for color. This is quite simple. Just describe the color that you can see. And, uh, and obviously you can ask the patient if there's been any changes to the lesion. D for diameter. Well, you just have to measure the rash. Uh, normally you can use like a ruler or yeah, a measuring tape and that would, that would do the trick too. Okay, so you are on the final part of your history taken. Normally the examiner may ask you several questions generally involving what is your next management plan, uh, what is your next investigation, and any differential diagnosis. Now, there's so many rash and lesions that you might need to um, go and spend some time to learn. I'm just going to cover two treatments that are common stations that happen during the exam. All right, eczema. Eczema is the most prevalent inflammatory skin condition in the world. And the main symptoms are dry skin, itching, and obviously a rash. You need to be aware that if it's a normal rash and, and um, it's just itchy and there's no redness, you can advise the patient to just use regular emollient. Maybe if they're using it once a day, you can tell them to increase it to twice, three times, four times, or as much as needed. Otherwise, if there's redness and there's itchiness on the rash, well, you need to consider uh, starting the patient or advising the patient uh, to start on a um, topical steroid. The normal one you will start with is the low potency um, steroid, which will be hydrocortisone. And each time the patient represents or depending how bad the rash is, you can increase it to Umovate, Betnovate, Dermovate and so on. Another common station or another common question that comes during the exam is a fungal in, in infection. That could be tinea capitis, tinea pedis, any type of fungal infection. How do you know if it's a fungal infe infection? Well, most fungal infection is like a singular rash. Um, it has a, a circular, circular shape, slightly raised, oftentimes red and they have scale uh, edges. Uh, things like that will be ringworm. And in this case, the treatment will be either a topical um, antifungal or an oral antifungal. Okay, there you have it. You've completed your dermatology history taking. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Um, if you want to, you can download the PDF uh, version of the, today's lesson uh, by clicking on the link below in the description. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one.